Hey ladies, I want to talk about something um, that just came up on my mind. I want to talk about men and their explanations. Okay, Me personally, um, if a man, let's say he does something wrong or he doesn't come through on something he was supposed to do, he will try to give me an explanation. Uh, back in my younger days, I would listen to explanations and I would let whatever he said go into my mind and I would be reasonable and I would think about it and I would make exceptions and I would, you know, I would do this whole mental game, you know, this whole mental process with myself. And sometimes I would think about his explanations for days and days and days and try to like convince myself that what he is saying is accurate and it's true and it makes sense and sometimes I would need him to just like over explain and then I would still have questions and I would you know have him explain again it's just like this long drawn out process and in the end I realized most times that um when a man is explaining okay and I'm not saying this is all men all the time but in my personal life experience I would find out that whatever the man was explaining, I found out usually much later that it was all a lie anyway. Um, so in my perception from where I stand, and I know a lot of other women feel this way too, I find is that in the majority of situations when a man is explaining something, he's just telling like a long lie. Um, and as I got older, I just didn't want to hear these explanations slash lies anymore. So I decided that I was no longer going to hear these things. Um, no, that doesn't mean that I have the power to make men stop lying. I don't. I don't have that power. But um, I do have the power to not listen to explanations anymore. Um, I actually do not even require explanations in my relationships anymore. I don't ask for explanations. Um, what's funny is that, um, oh, well, okay. So my emotional needs have changed as I've gotten older and I've matured. My emotional needs have changed. I, um, I, I no longer need explanations. I no longer even want explanations. If a man comes to me with an explanation without me even asking for one, I actually um, become very insulted. Um, in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, wow, not only has he failed whatever he was supposed to do or didn't come through or when he did something wrong, is trying to cover it up now with his explanation. Um, not only does he have the nerve to do that, he also has the nerve to come lie right to my face about it. And, um, try, you know, he's basically insulting my intelligence not only did he do the wrong thing he's also calling me stupid you know because he thinks I'm going to believe whatever is coming out of his mouth right now and he's also wasting my time because I have to listen to the explanation which I have better things to do in my day than listen to somebody's stories you know somebody's stories or excuses you know I don't have time for people's shortcomings okay um you know, not in like a hateful, mean way, you know, like I actually am not mad at these men. I don't feel mad at them. I just don't want to be bothered with the small stuff in life. And men's explanations to me are small stuff. It's just annoying stuff. I just don't have space for it in my life. It puts me in the wrong vibration. And basically at the end of an of an explanation, um, I'm just faced with, okay, is it a lie or is it the truth? And then also, it doesn't matter if it's the lie or if it's a truth because my life will continue to go on because my life is my own. I do not, in my mind, when I'm with a man, like in any type of relationship, whether, you know, it's like a civilian relationship or if it's an SD relationship, no relationship that I'm in. Okay. And this is somewhat of a secret, I guess. Um, it's not really a secret. It's just something I keep to myself. 
even if I'm with somebody, in my mind, I am still with myself. I am with myself and I am with God. And this person here is an extra thing in my life. And it's not, you know, he's not really necessary. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a more of a, it's more of a, of a detached relationship. So, um, uh, where was I going with that? I, I don't need his truth. I don't need this man's explanations. I don't need his truth. And I'm not mad at him when I'm not needing these things from him. It's just not important to me because I don't see us as an item. I see myself as separate from him. Okay. Back in the day when I used to have relationships and I used to be enmeshed in those relationships where we were basically like two souls joined together in this holy union. Um, yeah, I needed their explanations. Whatever they did or didn't do could really hurt me. Um, I, I was very emotionally dependent. Um, on men for a long time. So, um, all right. So the reason why I'm bringing this up right now is because I was just reading a text message from one of my SDs. Okay. Um, he is a scientist. Um, you know, he works a lot and things like that. And he travels for work. I've known him for many, many, many years. Uh, we recently became closer for a few months and um, you know, we spent some time on the island together. He came down to see me and, you know, um, you know, things were going nice and, you know, um, getting a little closer than they were in the past. <clears throat> um, anyway, he, um, apparently he didn't call me for a while, which I did not really notice because, I don't feel that way. I don't feel like I need to hear from him every day because I've, again, I have my own life going on and my own goals, my own thoughts going on in my mind and I do not feel enmeshed with him. Um, yes, I enjoy my time when I'm with him. It's fine. Um, but I don't feel like I need more of him than that. Yes, I could always use some more money, of course. Um, so anyway, um, he sent me a text saying he's really going through some stuff right now. It was basically an explanation text talking about how some things have happened in his life <clears throat> and uh, he needs to work on those things for a little bit. And he was basically saying that he's sorry he hasn't communicated with me in a while and he's like asking for my forgiveness and he's like trying to like call my phone instead of text because I guess he wanted to like verbally give me his explanations as soon as I read this text I'm thinking to myself huh I guess I haven't heard from him in a while I hadn't noticed until he pointed it out um and then the weird thing that he was trying to like give me a verbal explanation. He's done this in the past a couple times too. Over, I don't remember exactly what it was over. Oh, it was over like Valentine's Day or something like that. We were going to get together, but then we didn't. And like he wanted to like give me these verbal explanations. I'm like, why is this guy calling? Like I see my phone ringing. I'm like, what is going on? He's actually calling me because we don't talk. We just text and I'm completely fine with that. I do not like having voice conversations with these men. I really, really, really don't. I prefer to just do everything by text. One, because I can go back and remember everything we talked about, you know, um, you know, if, you know, for some reason I need to know because, you know, sometimes I say something and I forget or we don't talk for a couple weeks and if I'm talking to multiple people on my roster I can't keep them all straight so I like text because then I don't have to take notes you know I can just go back and reread the text and pick up wherever we left off so then he's trying to make a voice call I'm like oh god I hate when these men try to 
talk on the phone. God, it's so annoying. So anyway, he's like trying to call me and trying to call me. I get so mad when he does that. Um, so I don't pick up and, you know, I basically force him to just text me and he's trying to give me this like explanation of what's going on in his life, why he hasn't, uh, visited me or why he hasn't paid attention to me. Like, and I, I'm sitting there thinking, God, this guy is really trained by his ex-wife. Okay. Um, he was married for like 20 years. Uh, he's been divorced for, you know, several years now, but I can just tell that okay, he was married to an average civilian woman. Okay. Clearly, because somewhere along the line, he was trained. He, they probably went to therapy together or something. And the therapist told him that he needs to like, you know, um, be there for her emotionally. He needs to meet her emotional needs. He needs to spend time with her. He needs to call her. He needs to, you know, care about her feelings, all this stuff. So clearly he probably learned in therapy that this is what women need. But then he met me and um, he doesn't know how to deal with a woman like me. And I told him, <laughs> in text, I said, um, I don't need any explanations. I think they're annoying. If you're feeling some type of way about something you think you've slacked on with me, then just go buy me a gift. And I repeated it. Explanations are annoying. Gifts are much better. I like <laughs> Gifts and gifts are actually useful. Explanations are not useful. Gifts are useful. Just go buy me a gift or send me a gift. I was more referring to like, just freaking PayPal me. Okay. Send me money. Whenever you think you've done something wrong, send me money. Because when you try to send me your words, your explanations, I automatically think you're lying to me and then I feel insulted that you have the nerve to sit there and lie to my face. And two, you think I like you so much that I like need to know where you've been or why you haven't called. Like, no, I've moved on with my life. Okay. Um, I'm busy. I'm doing other things. And I'm not even realizing that you haven't called me. And honestly, like, when you call me, it's annoying anyway. The only time, all right, and this is going to sound harsh. The only time I enjoy spending time with a man is when he's contributing to my life financially. I find it annoying when a man is trying to talk to me or hang out with me and he's not contributing to my life financially. That's basically him saying that he is some type of prince or celebrity that's gracing me with his presence and I should basically be paying him but he's going to be so kind as to not charge me that's what it feels like when men try to like spend time with me and not give me money at the same time maybe that's wrong I don't know that's just how I personally feel that's where I'm at in life and no, I don't hate men. I absolutely don't hate men. I have some people that think that I don't hate men. I do not hate men. I just have solid boundaries around how I deal with men. Okay. The same kind of boundaries I have with my food. There are certain things I do not ever, ever, ever eat. That is sugar and flour. Under no circumstances do I ever eat sugar or flour. Okay. I also only eat three meals per day. Unless I'm working out hard, I have four meals per day. I don't have five. I don't have two. I don't, it's just something I do not do. I also have very certain times that I eat, okay? I intermittent fast. I have my first meal at about four o'clock every single day, okay? These are just rules I have for myself. And it doesn't mean I hate food. No, I love food. I think food is great, but to me, food needs to be done in a certain way or things get messy. If I don't do my food like that, 
I tend to overeat. The food begins to control me. I end up very regretful about my food. I end up gaining weight. All kinds of bad things happen when I don't control my food in the proper way. I've learned to deal with men the same way. No, I do not hate men, just like I do not hate food. I just know that it's a tricky substance. If it's not properly controlled, things can get out of hand. Things can get out of line. And all of a sudden, food that's supposed to be there to nourish my body and sustain my life and make me more healthy, if I'm eating the wrong food in the wrong ways, at the wrong times, in the wrong amounts, food will become something that's very bad for me. Food will be something that's actually hurting me. So I feel the same way with men and I've put the same boundaries around men. I deal with men in a specific way. I only deal with certain types of men. I deal with them at certain times, in certain locations, in certain ways. <clears throat> and I don't listen to certain things like explanations, excuses, you know, just like there's certain things I don't put into my body with food, okay? I don't put cake in my mouth, okay? I don't put cake in my mouth. It's just something I don't ever do. And with men, I don't put explanations in my ears. Why? It's going to make me sick. Cake makes, cake makes me sick. Cakes and cupcakes and pies and ice cream, they make me sick. I actually get sick from those things. Sugar is not good for my body. It's not good for my psyche. It's not good for my weight. It triggers my food addiction and causes all kinds of binge eating. Okay. Sugar is not good for me. That's why I do not put it into my hole. Okay. I do not put it into the hole in the center of my face. Men's explanations and excuses, I do not put those in the holes in the sides of my head, meaning my ears. I don't put them in there because it makes me psychologically sick. So I do not put that in there. There's other things in certain circumstances and situations where I do not put certain things in the hole between my legs. Why? Because it makes me sick, it makes me sick sick uh, uh let's say with things like chlamydia things like unplanned pregnancies okay the holes in your body <laughs> you need to take good care of the holes in your body don't put the wrong things in the holes in your bodies in the holes in your body <clears throat> if you want to talk about soul ties and evil spirits and things like that well, they get in through your holes, absolutely through the holes in your body, sexual soul ties. Those go in through the holes between your legs, okay? They can also get in through the holes in your ears, okay? There's all kinds of evil and bad and bothersome, tricky things that can get into you through the holes in your body. Guard your freaking holes. Okay. I'm not saying don't put anything in there. Be very careful with what you put in the holes in your body and all the holes in your body. Um, so, wow, this video is getting long. Huh, it sounds like I'm being myself today. I, I do that. I think I'm going to make a five minute video and it just leads into something else. All right. So he sent me this text trying to explain to me why he hasn't communicated um so i told him just don't explain to me send me a gift if you send me a gift i will know how you feel i will know you feel sorry and you still want to be in my life and you want another chance i mean it makes complete sense right and i will feel that you've actually done something to make it up to me words are free. I do not want a free gift when you feel you've messed up. That's ridiculous. Okay? Like, 
if you get into a car accident, right? Somebody hits you with their car. It's their fault. This is why we have insurance so people can be compensated. But let's say a guy hits you with his car, right? He causes damage to you, to you and your car. And then he comes up to you and he's like, you know, I'm really sorry. I feel so bad. I want you to know from my heart to your heart that I care about how I have hurt you. It makes me feel really sad. And I just want you to know my feelings. I want you to know my feelings and my emotions about this. And now you feel better, right? Well, I just gave you my explanation. Yeah, I was um, I was really tired when I was driving because I've been working a lot. And, you know, I kind of like nodded off at the wheel and I hit you. And I just want you to know that I'm really sorry about that. And then he walks away from your car and he gets in his car and he drives away. Well, that's great. He's sorry. And he gave you a great reason why. He's been working a lot. And he probably has been. Probably has a lot of bills. So he works a lot. So he was tired. And he hit your car. And he hurt you. And he hurt your car. And he made it all better by giving you his explanation. No, that is absolutely ridiculous. He needs to pay. He needs to go get some money from his bank and pay for the damages or obviously he has car insurance. His car insurance will pay for those damages. We don't need his verbal reasons and excuses. That says nothing. First of all, he may be lying. Maybe he wasn't tired. Maybe he was high. Maybe he was high on drugs. Okay. Like his verbal reasons don't matter. Whether they are a lie or they are the truth, they still don't matter. Somebody's verbal reasons and feelings about the situation don't change what's happened to you, okay? So why not just jump to the part where you pay for the damages instead of wasting my time giving me your verbal reasons? Because it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think it's silly and stupid and dumb and... um Usually in relationships between men and women, yes, he'll give all his reasons and excuses. And sometimes they're lies. Sometimes they're not. I have no way of knowing because I don't walk around with a polygraph test. Okay. Um, I just assume that whenever men are talking to me, they're, they're at least telling halfway lies. Okay. And I just understand that about them. And I understand that it is their nature. And I don't try to fight with nature because nature always wins. Okay. I don't care about that, but I assume most of what they're saying is not the truth anyway. Um, I'm losing my train of thought here a little bit. I think you're getting the picture of what I'm saying. Um, yeah, why not just jump to the part where you fix the problem, you know? It's almost like they would rather just give you all the verbal stuff because they're too cheap to fix the problem, okay? Because, yes, okay, they give the explanation and then they're supposed to go and fix the problem, okay? They give you the explanation of what happened. Just like they do in a police report when you have an accident. And then you pay. Just skip the explanation part and just freaking pay. You'll save us both some time. And you'll also save yourself from having to make up a story. And then you're going to have to remember that story. And it's just too stressful. And I don't really believe it anyway. And after you say it, I won't even remember what you just said. I'm just waiting for the part where you repay me. Um, yeah, I think it's unnecessary. So I told him just... I don't value explanations. Just give me the gift that you are going to give me anyway or the repayment for whatever you've done wrong. 
And it's especially funny with him because I didn't even realize he did anything wrong. That came from his own mind. He thought he had neglected me in some way and he was coming to me to apologize. Like, just send me a freaking gift. Like, <laughs> send me some money. And then I won't be mad at you anymore, which I wasn't even mad. There was nothing to be mad about because I didn't know he did anything wrong. I was not waiting by the phone for him to communicate with me. But for some reason, he thinks that I was. And I think it has to do with his past marriage where his wife was just like, you know, looking for him all the time, trying to be with him all the time, trying to spend time with him all the time. Um, and he has not realized that about me yet that I don't care. I don't care about all that stuff. Like, I really genuinely don't care. I don't even think about it. And I don't desire to spend all, you know, all that time with you anyway. If I desired to spend a whole bunch of time with him and know where he was and talk to him all the time, then I would be calling him all the time, trying to see him all the time. And I don't ever, ever, ever do that. He always has to reach out to me first. You know, every once in a while, I'll sprinkle in a little you know, friendly hello, you know, just send like a picture from the beach and be like, oh, thinking of you, you know, every once in a while I'll do something sweet like that, but I don't know. He's clearly in a delusion. He's in a delusional state. So, um, yeah, that's what this video was supposed to be about. <laughs> I know it's changed a little bit as I've gone on for 26 minutes. I just don't need explanations. I don't like explanations. They're a waste of my time. If you are a man and you feel you have wronged me in some type of way, whether I've expressed that to you or not, which if you have wronged me, okay, if a man has wronged me, he won't even hear that come out of my mouth. I will not even tell a man that he has wronged me, okay? I will just not communicate with him anymore. Then I guess he can kind of figure it out. There are some situations where I will tell a man he has wronged me, but it's only as um, as a tool to get something I need from him. And that's usually like, <sighs> like houses or cars or, you know, large sums of money, stuff like that, um, deposits I need for certain.